What's good, T people? This is Denny from TDB, bringing you guys in between the number 16. Boom! We have an adorable looking tea today. This is the uh, Yunnan Sourcing's 2013 Ripe uh, Mini 2 This is coming out of Scott's own little production here, and we have these cute little miniature mushroom 2-0s. They're adorable. Um, what do they look like? Let's do this. Boom. You can see. And frankly, I don't even know how much you see this is, but I'm gonna go for it. Bloop, right in there. Just give it a little rinse. Oops, going everywhere. And, um, oh man. I am making a mess. This is why I usually have a tea tray. So this is already expanding rapidly and just breaking apart immediately. And I'm gonna make sure that this gets nice and agitated. I'm using about a, I wanna say like a 80 milliliter guy wand here. And I'm gonna guess that we have about four to five grams of leaf. Make sure we get this nice and agitated. And we'll do a quick rinse here. It smells nice. So this would be kind of a cool tea to give to your friends because you can just throw them a little wrapped up, beautiful little tea thing like this. I'm gonna say three grams of leaf. Mm. Definitely more of that cherry wood stuff going on. Do one more rinse, make this a lot faster. I'm impressed the actual uh, leaves themselves broke apart very quickly, <clears throat> which probably means that it was, uh, <clears throat> that it hasn't been stored very long, um, uh, and that it probably was, um, I don't know, light stored? I'm not sure. We'll, we'll get more out of that from the taste in terms of the sourness. And this is definitely a young ripe, so um, <clears throat> I think it will change with age. Uh, over the next probably three years, most significantly. And then after that, it's going to drop off a fair amount. But definitely more of the woody, brandy kind of nose gone, this guy. Let's give this a shot. I'm not going to see this for very long because the leaf has spread apart dramatically as is. So just a little bit longer here. Perfect for one cup, and I always show you guys the liqueur, cool, but it's nice and dark. The leaves. Oh yeah, special effects, guys. I pay thousands of dollars for these special effects. Um, yeah, pretty standard. Nothing out of the ordinary in terms of the look and feel thus far. Let's give it a smell. Definitely has that kind of cherry thing going on. Sweet, woody. Give it a taste. Cheers, guys. Mm. Interestingly, it has more, um, more of the uh, chocolatey, uh, vanilla-y kind of notes going on in terms of the flavor profile, which I think I like actually. I was expecting more fruit, a little bit more sweetness, but it's, it's good. It's a little bit more bitter than I expected in the, in the good way, in the sense that coffee is bitter, but good. Do another one. Still nice and thin, interestingly enough, so the liqueur is very dark, but the actual viscosity is kind of so-so. Um, this is the first steeping. We've done two rinses though. I was actually expecting it to be a little bit more thick than this. Let's do one more taste. It's good, but we're definitely not seeing the full flavor profile quite yet. And this is also young, so it's going to lack a little bit of the complexity that you're going to find in a um, 
you know, 10 year ripe. But my experience has been that ripe's not going to change that dramatically from, you know, seven years to 15 years, um, just because the microbes in there are kind of working really hard, especially early on. Um, so let's do a little bit of a longer steeping this time. I think you can tolerate it. The bitterness wasn't astringent, by the way. It wasn't that sort of tannin, like, bleh, uh, mouth puckering kind of bitterness. It was just kind of like bitter flavor notes, so sort of like dark chocolate. Um, so let's do this. And interestingly enough, it's maintaining that saturation of color, not getting a lot darker, and yet I gave it a harder steep, and it's much hotter now. Still very light. Oh man, crazy. It's got a very fruity nose, very cherry uh, wood kind of vibe going on. She has the uh, leaves in the core again. It's really dark, and even the rinses, I mean, the rinses are very dark too. Um, so, I mean, this just might be one of those sort of lighter viscosity teas, which, interestingly enough for me, I like to drink uh, on hotter days. I just feel like I want to chew my tea more when uh, it's kind of cold outside. Um, the thickness of kind of like hot cocoa is really soothing to me when it's cold out. and I kind of like the same thing. So, it could be that we're using a little bit less leaf than average, um, but I wouldn't take two of these in a 100 milliliter guy one. I think that would probably be a little gross. So. Uh, in terms of sourness, none really. Um, so, and there's nothing really popping out quite yet with this one, um, but at the same time, it's not uh, over the top bad in any weird ways. Cheers. So much better. Um, much more smooth, velvety. Um, more of the that sort of category of those kind of creamy um, flavors, so kind of like vanilla beans, cocoa beans, kind of a thing. Um, not much fruit at all, actually. Surprised by that. Definitely kind of square in the middle of that poor category, although not super branchy um, or like uh, uh, barky. I'm having a hard time placing this sweetness. Um, it's kind of vanilla sweet. I'd say it's kind of like that creamy ice cream sweet kind of a thing. Um, but hard to place. It's definitely nothing is popping out strongly in that regard. But it's sweet. It's weird. really mellow. I think this is a really approachable tea. I think this would be a great tea to give somebody, um, especially because of the size and it's kind of cute, but also because it's kind of the perfect amount for uh, a cup. If you want to just throw it uh, into a mug, grandpa style, I think that would work really well with this tea. Which I've been doing a lot on this trip and it's been fun actually. It's kind of nice. It's definitely full body with no tannins. It's got more um, viscosity now than it did before, but it's still it's still like medium to light in that regard. Um, in terms of flavors, I'm having a hard time placing this, frankly. Uh, I think the sweetness is kind of uh, a little obscure, but there. Um, and there's a nice uh, vanilla kind of run all the way through. Um, you got your classic kind of uh, woody, Pu'er flavor going on for the ripes, but you know, it's not super strong. It's not like I'm sucking on a tree uh, or anything like that. Um, but this is actually really pleasant. It's, it's kind of, I call it kind of like a light, I don't know. It's kind of like if you wanted to drink white tea, but you wanted the flavor of, uh, of a ripe pu'er. I think that's kind of how I would describe this. It's like, it's kind of almost crisp in some weird way, but it's not vegetal, it's not, particularly fruity, it's not at all roasted or nutty. Um, I don't know, hard to place, which is kind of fun. I like that. All right, we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna kind of go nuclear on this one and let it kind of, let it go for a minute or two. 
by a minute or two, I mean about 30 seconds. I don't know why I say these things. <laughs> um, we've been hanging out and uh, drinking tea on and off, um, uh, pouring tea for friends who uh, hang out with us, and um, it's been really fun. Um, and I'm surprised constantly, actually, by how uh, how much people like uh, Ripe Pour, interestingly enough. It doesn't strike me as one of those teas that people would just try and be like, oh, this is good. Um, but yeah, and given that the context for a lot of these folks uh, here in Columbia is like Twinnings, I think is the brand, you know, and like early, kind of like, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't even really, unfortunately, I don't know. I don't know any of the name brands at this point, but um, we'll call that good. Something to know about this tea, especially the, the version of it as being kind of a mini 2 -0. there's a little bit more particulate than there would be in, say, a brick that you're going to um, uh, kind of crunch into three different pieces. Um, that's fine. If you want to, if you really are a stickler about that, um, first off, just work on your Gaiwan technique a little bit. Um, and then also, uh, you can use a screen if you want. Um, I think that I've just kind of reached a point of laziness. Some people care a lot about that. It's a big deal. In terms of presentation, it definitely affects presentation, especially served with like a kind of a shallow white cup and you're serving a bunch of people. So uh, make your decisions by that. I don't think that serving or uh, that um, pouring through a stainless steel uh, filter or porcelain filter is going to affect flavor really. Um, technically, it will in the sense that you know pouring anything through anything is going to affect the the chemical composition of it slightly, but. Um, I am not that good, and uh, I'd be hard pressed to find someone who really is actually. So, if you can blind taste test the same tea and tell me which one is poured with a steel strainer, um, you are a tasting god and contact me. Okay. Uh, cheers, guys. This is the best steeping easily. Much more flavors going on. The viscosity has remained the same. There's this weird uh, kind of menthol herbal thing happening. Um, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, two thirds of the way through. It's nice, it's subtle. It adds a weird almost bit of sourness to this tea. Um, and I don't think that's actually the, um, the pure itself. I think that's the flavor. Um, the chocolate's coming out a little bit more now. The sweetness has died off a little bit too. No astringency though, no bitterness. Um, so interestingly enough, this has evolved from kind of a simple, straightforward light tea to, I think it's still light in its like uh, appearance, but there's definitely some complexity there. I think it's really well balanced. Um, and I think that great teas that are gonna kind of show themselves in the third, fourth, and fifth steepings are gonna come off a little bit straightforward in the beginning and then kind of have that complexity come through and then slowly die off. So you'll find that with well-balanced teas, teas that are a little bit sharper in certain places are gonna kind of be a little bit more intense and then balance out as you steep them, not the other way around. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm actually really enjoying this. This is pleasant. Um, this is, I don't know if this would be the most accessible red pour because it's not particularly sweet. The sweetness is kind of hard to find, um, but it's still uh, quite nice, quite nice indeed. Um, and again, I think, the best way of describing this would be sort of like if you're looking for a little bit more of a crisp white tea essence in a ripe pour, I think this would be a great one. So this has been Denny from TDB. In between a in blah, 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 in between a in between a sode, blah, number sixteen, uh, 2013 Unon Sourcing's Mini 2O. Check those guys out, unonsourcing.com. Um, I think it's unon-sourcing.us for their US website. Scott is awesome and has hooked us up a ton. Love reviewing his teas. He's got so much stuff. Some of it's awesome. Some of it's not the best. Um, but he has a variety of price ranges, and we've reviewed a ton of his teas. So check him out. Um, also check us out on tdb.org. Subscribe that way. Um, join our newsletter. Uh, I think James actually just started blasting people, uh, blasting emails out on our newsletter. So that's pretty sweet. And. Um, yeah, drink some tea. Let me know in the comments if you like this video. And until next time, cheers.